You know, sooner or later, everyone who goes into the woods and builds a fire is going to experience a problem either getting it lit, keeping it lit, or trying to get it reignited after it dies down. And if we go back to our basic fire making from Bushcraft 101, we, learned, we know that there are three elements to building a fire. First is the heat or the ignition source. Second is the fuel and the quality of the fuel. And the third, of course, is oxygen. So given that we have flame or we have uh, the means to make flame, we'll take that one out of the equation. Now let's analyze the other two. It's either the quality of the fuel, meaning it's a little bit too wet, or was a little bit too big to start with, or it wasn't the right fuel just to get the fire going and sustain it. You didn't have enough of the smaller stuff. Um, any of those ones could be within the fuel. And of course, the other, op or the other thing we have to look at is the oxygen. Did we pack the fire too tight? Did we smother it by putting too much fuel on it too soon? Well, we can look at those things, but here we are, we're in a position where the fire's not working so well. What can we do? Well, we can uh, try and add some smaller kindling to it. We can try and move the fire layer around so we can have more oxygen moving up through it. But then let's see if we can add more oxygen to it. Now, most often what we do is we get down on our knees and we blow at the fire. The other option is to take something like my sit pad here and wave it at the fire. Both very effective. I'm not a big fan of getting down on my knees and blowing at the fire if I don't have to. I will, of course, if I do need to. But, you know, it invites getting down on my old knees, but it also invites to get a face full of smoke as well. Not everyone carries a sit pad with them, but if you have it, it can be very effective. Or hat. I've used my tele hats during the summer for the same effect. But recently, I was watching a video by Dean from the Alberta Bushcrafter channel. And Dean was reviewing a product which I had seen before, and I think most of you had seen. It was the Pocket Bellows version 3 from Epiphany Gear. And Dean gave a quite a high remark, or quite a high remark. He did some testing on screen. I encourage you to go watch Dean's video. Um, and I was quite interested in that, and I commented to Dean, I said, Dean, I really like the, that object, or that device, but uh, I'm a little thinking that I don't know that I want to spend the $27 Canadian. And Dean replied back, he said, well, you could always take an antenna off a car. And I said, well, I don't think I want to risk the vandalism charges, but uh, he said, well, how about one of those telescopic uh, hot dog sticks you can get a Canadian tire? And that got me thinking, I had a few things around the house that uh, might actually work. So I went down into my workshop and I pulled out three things. And the first thing I pulled out was a selfie stick. Now I've already modified this one. It's a dollar store selfie stick. It's uh, quite long. I'll give the measurements of my, my finished product in the uh, show notes below. Um, it's not bad. It's, you know, it's, it's not anywhere near as compact as the pocket bellows is, but uh, it might work. The second one I dug out was, actually I went to the dollar store to get this one because I remember seeing it there. And this is what's left of one of the dollar store uh, hot dog sticks for holding it over the fire. Uh, don't buy it for that purpose because I didn't even have to put much twisting on the fork on the end of it and it popped right off. So it's probably better off being modified to one of these. And uh, I'll show you one of these things. I bought two of them. I'll show you one that I haven't modified just to give you an idea what they look like. Uh, this is nice. Smaller than the... Uh, selfie stick but still not quite as small as the pocket bellows is but I like it it even had a small silicone ring on the end of it for holding I guess or so I don't burn my lips or freeze my lips I guess more likely and the third one is something I had already had and I had tried this before and it worked quite successfully and that is um, one of those small extendable or telescopic inspection mirrors they have the small one inch little diameter mirror on it that you can hold underneath uh, something that you can't see with your eyes and uh, the mirror had broken and I saved the telescopic part not wanting to throw it away and this is about as close in size as the as you can get without actually buying the pocket bellows and I quite like this it's small enough and pocketable enough to use and that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try these out both on my firebox stove as well as a campfire and uh, compare them. Now it's not a which one is better, it's uh, just a couple of options to show you. I'll even use my sit pad to see how that works out and uh, we'll just try a couple of things to see if we can get the fire after it burns down, if we can get it reignited and get it going again with uh, one of these devices. Hope you enjoy. Well, here's a good opportunity right here. While well, I was busy filming my intro, the fire in my firebox died down. And uh, anybody who owns small stick stoves knows you gotta you gotta tend them. Firebox may be better than most, but you gotta tend them. They, if you don't have a small or a good supply of small sticks ready to go, and pay attention to them, they'll very quickly burn out and uh, leave nothing but ash. I've got just a few hot coals left in the bottom of this, 
and a few sticks here that I'm ready to drop in. Yeah, just coals in the bottom now. And this is going to be a good test to see how these pocket bellow devices work on something like the firebox stove. So I have, do have some dry small pine that I'll drop in. Slightly larger pieces of pine that are also dry. And these are pieces of what I believe is poplar, uh, questionable on how dry they are, but let's just give this a go. Alright, so you can see it's starting to smoke. There's no live flame in there right now. First one I'll try is the selfie stick. A little long. I can shorten that up though. Let's give that a go. I'm uh, going to be blowing first through the port on the side of the stove and then we'll blow in through the top. And I can tell you right now, I did get a little flame going. Not a real fan of, the, of this one. I think the large diameter, um, the blow through is too short. Doesn't deliver with enough force. So now I'm going to use. Oh, the fire got going anyway. This is the hot dog stick or hot dog barbecue fork. Yeah, that's pretty effective. Pretty good. And finally, the inspection mirror. Well, that certainly brought that back in a hurry. I think it might have come back in a, on its own, but. Uh, you know, that much quicker. If your wood's a little suspect, this is one way of bringing it back even faster. All right, let's try it on a full fire. So my fire is struggling a little bit here. Uh, I've got the wood probably spaced a little bit too far apart. It's not the best wood. It's wood I've been collecting around the woods here. I suspect it could be drier, but that's a good, a good test of uh, these pocket bellow devices so it's going but it's not going with a lot of force and I think if I don't tend it it's going to start to drop down so first thing we'll do is we'll try the selfie stick well that helped still not a fan of the selfie stick just too big Barbecue fork. Yeah, that, that works pretty good. I like that. And the inspection mirror. Pretty small diameter. Barbecue fork again. Yeah, without question, best one of the three so far. Nice heat. So I was going to film this section of or this portion of the video and my fire I had was intentionally let it die down. I put a some wood on it that I knew not to be too dry and I was waiting for it to die down. It died down and I was getting ready to carry on with this section and uh, the wood apparently dried out enough that it caught on its own, but we're going to give it a try anyway. I'm trying to not work within the 
wind itself, but still allow you to see what I'm doing. So, what's traditional? Traditional is getting down, getting a face full of smoke, but blowing on it, it can work. Uh, not my favorite. Let's give that a go. Yeah, that helped a little bit. Makes me a little woozy, I guess. You know, something else that's been recommended I see occasionally is, and I'm not sure that I can do this properly, but it's to take my fingers, make a small diamond, hold it up to my mouth, and apparently it makes a small uh, vortex or a small uh, path for the air to go through and blow through that at the fire. And you don't have to be too close, apparently, to make this work. All right, there's a trick to it, I don't know. I, I can't make that work any better than just blowing on it. But what I'll probably try more often than not if I don't have one of those pocket develop devices just to take my sit pad. And that works, works well. But still, you know, between the sit pad and the pocket bellows device, both work. Pocket bellows just seems to be a little easier. All right, my fire seems to be building back up again. I think it's time to make some lunch. Okay, so just a few thoughts in closing. Of the three devices that I tried, the selfie stick, the barbecue fork, and the inspection mirror, of those three, the barbecue fork is the one that I found that be most effective. A little larger, I suspect it's, uh, well, I'll, I'll do some comparisons, I guess, and put it on the screen, the comparisons against the, uh, the pocket bellows. But uh, I think the pocket bellows is very close to the selfie stick in size, making the barbecue fork just a little larger. But uh, I think it's worth the difference. Now, this is not a condemnation of the pocket bellows. In fact, I suspect it's a much better quality designed specifically for doing this with. If you feel you want to spend the money, you don't want to have to go out and get one of these things that you modify yourself, I think it's a fine device. There's no question about it. I've never owned it. I've never handled it. I really can't say one way or the other how good it is. But for me, I think this is probably going to be something I carry in my fire kit or in my backpack uh, most of the time. It, uh, You know, we all struggle once in a while with the fire and it's good to have something there. Yes, you can use your hat. Yes, you can use your sit pad. You could get down on your knees and blow. Any small tube would probably do the same thing to a certain degree, but this one certainly did a, an excellent job of keeping my fire going or reigniting it or really boosting the flames in it. So that's all this video was intended to be, to show you that there are some options that it is worth considering having something that you can use to keep your fire going or to add oxygen to it. Don't forget the basics. Ignition source. We all have multiple ignition sources in our, first, in our fire starting kit. Fuel. Smallest kindling right up through to the fuel. Should be dry, should be quality, should be of the right size and consistency. Not too rotten, obviously not green. And uh, when the, then when you go from there, proper fire build. Allow for oxygen to be able to move through your, your fire build. And when you run into trouble, and we all will, sooner or later, something like this will really go a long way to uh, keeping that fire going. Okay, so if this is a video that you found valuable to you, you got something out of it, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and right next to the subscribe button now is this bell, and it's a notification bell so that you don't miss future videos. Share it with your friends. And in the meantime, until the next video comes out, get out and explore. Here it is, the first day of February. My Lord, what a beautiful day. I was, I was actually hoping for, where they were, the weather was calling for some snow, I had a few flurries, didn't, didn't actually happen, but my God, what a beautiful day. I'm glad I came out. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.